My name is Colin McQuiston and I'm the Senior Advisor for Climate Change and Disaster Risk Reduction at Practical Action. Okay, the key challenge, the session was uh, session 12, the role of the private sector in enhancing community-based adaptation. And we got the participants in the session to uh, undertake an activity where we said if there was to be an ideal, um, um, who were the key partners who need to come together to deliver for the private sector in regards to community-based adaptation and vice versa? And what would that um, network look like? So we asked the groups to think about who were the key act actors. We asked the groups to think about what incentives would bring those actors into that fora to actually connect the private sector and the communities. Where we had the struggle when, during the session was actually to identify how you would measure whether that relationship was working, whether it was effective, and whether it was really delivering to the communities effective adaptation. We had uh, a presentation from the private sector in Kenya and they talked about a lot of business opportunities that communities, particularly smallholder farmers, can contribute to. There was a reaction from some of the people in the audience very much around the, the ethics and the climate justice question. Really, um, at the beginning, we asked them whether the people in the room felt that they thought that the role of private sector in community-based adaptation was a good idea or a bad idea. And I would say it was 99% said it was a good idea and very few said it was a bad idea. However, at the end of the session, I think a lot more people were saying, if the private sector is gonna be involved in community-based adaptation, it can't be on a profit motive only. It has to be around social, environmental, equity, justice, and delivering uh, the triple pillar of sustainable development. The area with the least agreement was really around coming up with metrics that could effectively measure not only the benefits that the private sector would gain, but also the benefits that the community would gain from this partnership, from this collaboration. The profits, the delivery on, in increases in production, on food security, I think people can see those quite easily but are they really responding to the actual needs of the community? Are they delivering effective adaptation to those communities? And I think the challenge really around measuring adaptation that is truly holistic. We don't just want adaptation around a sector, food security or water. We want adaptation that meets all of the challenges of the communities because we know with climate change, it's a, it's a moving playing field and things are going to change in the future. So those communities need to be adapted to multiple threats and stresses. So I think the key lessons were really around the challenge of measuring um, and the need to get better metrics to get the private sector to really seriously consider those who are most at climate risk as a potential partner. Uh, we need really, I think, to also show the benefits to those who are most at risk about engaging and working with the private sector. The private sector's got skills, it's got knowledge, it's got experience that can help people who are most at climate risk. But I think equally we need to sort of make sure that the private sector recognises the potentiality of working with those who are facing those climate risks. So, What's the information, the knowledge, the data needed to make the case for both those who are most at climate risk and the private sector? How to deliver benefits to both, but ideally how to deliver co-benefits so that a real holistic mutual relationship can be developed. 